Welcome on back for a little bit of a uh, between series segment here. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with this one. We're gonna bring on Joshi and Deserex to be able to uh, depict some of these pictures I'm gonna bring up as we're gonna have our uh, own version of Proving Grounds pictures here where I had some players draw some very, very wonderful uh, artist drawings uh, uh, of things that are important to them, things that they want to <laughs> draw. And we're going to see what we got, all right? Because I'm even going to have to dissect some of this. This is going to be great. <laughs> I'm very excited. So we have artists, Ooh. and then we have abstract artists, all right? So we're going to go We're gonna go start this one off uh, as our first picture. What the frick is that? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that, okay. That's one of the, I, uh, the, the canisters from uh, Urgot, no? It looks hey. like Urgot's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's like corrosive charge or something? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was right. <laughs> it's corrosive charge. <laughs> Well, uh, you just said Alorum, and that kind of gave away that it was likely either going to be Urgot or your Wukong, but oh my goodness, what is this? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that uh, anything to, like, Ryze's veins or something? <laughs> I mean, my first thought is there's a certain kind of pour over in guess. Japan. That's your official guess. Um, <laughs> it's, I'm I'm not sure so what this could really be, Kelsey, right? Because it, it looks kind of like Rise. Kelsey uh, had thought that it was the a, a Rise ability, obviously because Strompus, and I, I believe it was like the the scattering one, the E. Or the e? the W maybe rune prison. Oh no 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 the yeah. scattering prison? one the scattering ones the rune uh, prison's the root. But honestly, yeah. I have no idea. He also did not give like oh, I didn't ask them. Did he not tell you? No, because I didn't ask them to tell us what it is. Because I wanted us to dissect it, figure out what it is. So I think it's hilarious that we're just gonna leave this one. It is literally the best art, abstractly of proving grounds so far. So the, thank you, Strompus. Thank you. I, I believe. Honestly, I feel like. It could serve as like no team's new logo. <laughs> <laughs> Strong, you, you uh, make sure to get them to that. commission that one. Make sure, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if you could commission uh, do that. I just right click so, and copy it, right? We're gonna go on to our third <laughs> one. This one's a shocker. I don't know if you know this one. Uh, so this one is from no team top laner Dragoon, and I think you can uh, see where his appetite lies. Yeah. It's a frog, right? Yeah, for sure, frog. <laughs> yep, you see the eyes and like the legs. Yeah, there, you know, there's it's a not, tongue in there not somewhere. It's guacamole whatsoever. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just absolutely really old not Captain guacamole. Crunch. That's what it is. Absolutely. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know if we are. No, uh, I don't want to talk about old Captain Crunch. It's one of Kungus's <laughs> smoothies. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. Bring it full uh. circle. Bring it full circle. All right, our last. Last, last one. All right, this one's this one is uh, this one is from Taco Gaming Support Rovex. Just take a guess. Just take a guess. <laughs> what? Why are you uh, serious? <laughs> you don't know who that is? Oh, okay. I figured it it's out. It's a I banana. Out. You played on the team, Josh. There's a banana. <laughs> I, I I figured out like what the banana was, but I was like, what is that plus two? It's like what, what is the plus it's number? That, I, I figured that part out, but it's kind of like, uh, wow. like I was trying to figure out is there a specific reason for like that number, or did he just like pick something oh, that felt? You large? know what? Like, you know on, what? Josh. We've obviously found out that Josh is the fake one here. He is not cultured, and uh, he he does not know how to appreciate art. Um, I mean, it just looks like casually explained. <laughs> Well, sometimes that's all you need in art. Do you, yeah, yeah, it's the it, artist's it. interpretation, Joshi. Don't put him down. Don't put the artist down because you don't know how to I'm be not, cultured. I'm casually explained as a fantastic YouTube series. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what it looks like. 
<laughs> well, I just want to give a huge shout out to Lorem, Strompus, Dragoon, and Rovex. Thank you so much for uh, for giving yeah. us those photos. It was oh, it, it was incredible. Fantastic, fantastic artistry right there. Strompus, if you're in Twitch chat or like on Twitter or whatever, like let us know what it is because I still don't. Please let us know. I, I want to know. I want to know what it is. My brain can't take it anymore. Speaking of can't take it anymore. My brain can't take that first game. My goodness. I, The Disney buff? I don't know if the Evil Genius Academy just need to go to Disney every day or what? But my God, when Surdy is gapping that far in the top lane, it's so hard to play the rest of the game. Maryville Saints yeah. are going to have to find a way to come back. I was a little bit worried when I saw that uh, the NAR came through. Because, again, if, if this is your first time watching mm. me cast... You will be surprised to hear that Nara has been my most played character every season for the past five years. And whenever I get counterpicked by Chinomir, I just sit there and go, Ugh, it's going to be so awful. I'm going to have to build <laughs> Trinity Force and Randuins, and then I get to play the game afterwards. And this is a situation where they saw the Trinomir and like, yeah, I want to play some Nara. And they're yeah. just like, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I knew you were on stream, Joshi. Oh, that was... I appreciate the shout out. That, that was such a head scratcher to me. I, I I really didn't understand the NAR pick in that one. And all you had to do was watch the first, like, what, five minutes of the game to realize why it was bad. He just walked up to him and killed him straight hey, up. And hey, from there, it was I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it to PCL. There was one moment where he was proxy farming the top lane against 30. All right. It was one time and it happened once. And then he got killed like twice in a row after that. But <laughs> <laughs> the aggression was there. Yeah. That's what the PCL that I know and love is about, right? And going into yeah. 30, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. And I think that that can come back to bite the Saints a little bit, as we saw. I definitely, I definitely think that we're going to need to see something a little bit more playable up in the top side, right? Like, the NAR matchup with perfect play is fine. But this is not where we're going to be seeing perfect play, right? Yeah. This isn't the LCS. This is uh, These are developmental players who are still trying to prove that they are going to be making it up uh, towards the top of the echelons. And when you are trying to put that on yourself, I feel like it's just such a high bar at this point in play that I would like to see something a little bit more straightforward because it's not like you have a lot of time to play. This is do or die. You have to win both games in order to stay in the tournament. Yeah, and with the performance like we saw the last time, it also shows you Evil Geniuses Academy. They have a solid set plan. It felt like things fell apart for uh, Maryville Saints very early on, you know, uh, just the focus onto the bot lane. Evan RL was never really able to get online, and when they were able to lock down, get back with this aggressive dive composition and having the side lane control of Surdy, there were no windows back in for Maryville Saints. It just seemed like the snowball got out in front of them and there was no snow gear and nothing available for them to stop it. And I, we were talking about the bottom lane, right? And like how there could be fireworks, Cowrie obviously popping off, but a lot of it got kiltered because of the top lane. I felt like the, you saw get back on the, on the mobile Ari trying to get into the side lanes, trying to get into the influence of these skirmishes, but it was so far out in front of them that they really didn't have anything to say about it. Sligo had a lot of aggression in his back pocket yeah. for that reason and i think we saw where evil geniuses academy were stumbling though right like we saw that in some of those fights the aggression that 10k gold buff uh it definitely gives the uh gets the things going for evil genius academy yeah. but it can come back to uh, hurt them as well yeah it definitely covered up a lot of some of the uh misplaced like beginnings to fights mm -hmm. that they often had but uh, I, I do want to give them a lot of credit for having a lot of trigger pull on Tomio and Saligo, which is something that we're not necessarily as familiar with, right? Whenever they saw an opportunity, they would go for it. And did it work every time? No, but the fact that they're still going for it at all is still something that I've been very impressed on this particular game from Evil Geniuses, and it's something that I want to see more of. Yeah, especially from Saligo. Um... You know, you, you can mention that he died in a few of those fights, died twice, the most on his team, sure, but every time he did, he took someone with him. He went onto that backline dive, and he got a priority target. Like every single time, it seemed like, yeah. even in 1v4s, <laughs> he was still taking one. The other big thing before he gets to champ select is this jungle matchup. For Kind, I need to see some aggression from this guy. He's known for the likes of the Evelyns, the forward aggression in the jungle. Hopefully, we get to see that this time around, as game two is ready to go. So, Deserex, Josie, take it away. Bye, Lennon. I, I, I always want, I, I, just the buys. We, we got to make these more wholesome, man. I just want to be like, I, I want him to give me a proper goodbye, just not just this take me away stuff. 
But, you know, <laughs> hey, 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 take me away. Hey, it is what it is. I, I still miss you, Mazel. I wish we could do this all three on together. But now, hey, it's it's my turn. It's my time. It's our time, Joshi, for Maryville Saints EG Academy. Yeah. What adaptions are we going to expect right here? Uh, we're already seeing some changes come in. Trindamir and Hecarim are not going to be on the Rift. Yep, makes uh, makes a lot of sense when you're going up against somebody and there are a couple problem champions, you ban them away. And in fact, that is going to be entirely what Maryville is going to be doing. I don't even remember what they banned last game because they're just like, yep, yeah, nope. Uh, we don't want to allow you to play any of those this time around. And it is going to be meaning that we're going to be seeing a brand new draft coming out. A different opening from Evil Geniuses, if you will. Uh, so the bans for Maryville Saints were uh, pretty much just catered towards, hey, that game won. You're not allowed to do that again. Please nope. never do no that more. to my poor Evan RL. They're still going for the first pick, Jinx. So it, it should be a very similar strategy of trying to get Evan RL online. But we got to get a different way to get there as uh, Jinx will be the first pick. Ooh, okay. I kind of hope this gets locked in because it is something that we've been seeing a lot more. Jinx, you know, try, true. We've seen it first pick on blue side basically every game for pretty much this entire season. But Kaisa is something that's a little bit new, a little bit spicier, right? We've been seeing this in mid, first played by Faker that I know of, where he went the AP build. And then we've been seeing it popping up here and there in different regions as a mid lane, as a bottom lane, as something that just scales incredibly hard and is able to overcome a lot of its early game deficiencies with the Hail of Blaze and just getting a lot of burst damage under somebody really quickly. So I really like this coming through and the Tomio Lee Sin, I've been missing this. I, I love this from Evil Geniuses Academy so far. There's so much front burst damage you you have to deal with. Oh God, the Lee Sin, Tomio Lee Sin, you already said it, that's a hype one to grab. Um, for the Kaisa, this is something I was kind of hoping we'd see on Maryville Saints end that I was mentioning at the start of this. Uh, getting grabbed over by the side of uh, Evil Geniuses Academy, but interesting response coming through here. Uh, grabbing the Thresh, tried and true for Zyko. No issues there. Get back is now going to try his luck on the Simba. Ooh, and I like this too. A lot more aggression wow. coming through from Skytech, right? We Just were seeing go. him play the Tom Kent where he was like stopping any damage from coming through. This time he's like, no, it's my turn. Let's go. We're fighting. It's all forward all the time. No breaks coming out from Evil Geniuses. And that just means that the trigger pull has to be there. They have to be ready to make these plays happen. They need to be going forward. And now, as we turn our attention towards the rest of the draft, one kind jungle is Evelyn still available, right? There's still opportunities to go for a lot of different aggressive junglers, a lot of things that can try and out farm the lease in. And I also like this Vex band coming through. So there's still a lot of things that we need to pay attention to. At least so far for uh, this roster, when it came to the second qualifiers and the circuit qualifiers, only got to play that Eve once, but it was a pop-off game for Kind Jungle. Uh, yeah. Very strong champion in his wheelhouse. The first fix. EG aren't afraid. I, I, I do like the amount of damage you do have uh, on the opposite side. If you can run something uh, more pick oriented on the side of Maryville uh, Saints. Yeah. So we'll see what they end up going for. Uh, I do like the Rek'Sai ban. It is growing in popularity, going up against the Lee Sin as well. And now it is going to be looking like Saligo kind of having the, you know, pick, <coughs> excuse me, pick of the litter, right? There's a lot of champions you can go for. Only thing really banned away is the Vex. And you can just go for it. Basically any champion. Ari is very strong. We know his victor has been very good throughout the season. And now putting himself on a bit more of a carry role. Right, he needs to be a bit more proactive now on this pick, and that's something that he had a great time doing yesterday, or last game. Maybe also yesterday, I didn't watch solo queue. Let's try and uh, guess the counter pick right here. Final pick is gonna go over to Surdy. Uh, we have a lot of early aggression. If they wanted to play into that more, uh, if he could get something like a Renekton, that would be pretty divine. It's something he's uh, played a lot throughout the Academy season. Uh, other champions that come to mind, if you just want side lane control Camille, can pop off, but it all really depends on what this first pick for Maryville Saints is going to be. True. I mean, we'll see what he wants to go for, right? PCL is known for having quite a wide champion pool where he just goes for a lot of things, but he plays a lot of these really big bruisery types. And with the Graves coming through, I mean, typically the answer has been Trindamir. Mm -hmm. uh, Camille is also not bad. So I wonder if Serdy wants to play Jace. Right, just something that has a lot of damage, also brings this big alpha strike and really adds to the poke on the west rest of what Evil Genius is going to be doing. And there you go, 
coming through right away. And so this is going to be a matchup where, again, very volatile for both sides. If Graves gets ahead, it's very difficult for Jace to come back due to the amount of armor that PCL has available to him. But if Surdy gets ahead, there's still some play for PCL just because, again, like it, be, it takes a lot of damage to take down a Graves. I, I just want to bring up your favorite little phrase that we used to go over all the time, Joshi, and that is, uh, gotta have your dive buddies. That's what I see. Gotta have your dive buddies. Right now. They got dive buddies. They got dive buddies galore. The least they're all dive buddies. He's the original dive buddy. <laughs> uh, you know, Leona's gonna lead the charge, but everyone here has some mobility to get in a fight in a very timely manner, get the kill, and get out. Yeah, you never dive by yourself. <laughs> Always got to make sure that somebody else has that spare oxygen tank. And this is a situation where evil geniuses, every single one of their champions can be going forward. Maryville Saints are going to need to be on the back foot the entire time and always ready to try and pick off individual members. So it is a lot of opportunity here. Evil geniuses absolutely stopping through game one. Maryville Saints need to win both games consecutively at this point to stay in proving grounds. It's a tough composition to go against. Uh, there's pick potential that we were talking about from Maryville Saints composition, but it, it, it's online so early for EGA. Uh, the damage comes together so well for EGA. Once they do get that mid game spike, they start splitting the map and they start having fights around these uh, mid game objectives. Yeah. Also shout out to our uh, host, Travis Gafford. <laughs> Thank you, Star Gina. It is not, in fact, Travis Gafford. His name is Lennon Mazel White, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going back. Now we have the full discount. Oh, we have uh, full discount Latin rest. American Freak, Walmart Jet, and now Travis Gafford hosting. So we will see how the rest of the game goes, but we are going to be loading in the Rift here in just a moment. And Evil Geniuses looking to cement their ticket to be able to play up against Cloud9 in the next round. So. Pretty easy execution uh, from EJ's composition. They, they have a lot to really just soften them up, right? The Jace, even though it needs a lot of income, if you are able to pay it, it's due respects. Uh, before team fights, before a lot of these neutrals, just poke them down, get those shot glass in. Uh, chip away at the health bar before you can instantly pull that trigger with the entirety of this composition, which uh, follows up very well. Yeah, and very excited to see, right? And Kauri also, depending on what kind of at Kaisa, he does choose to go. There's a lot of options available to him. And I feel like Kauri is not the kind of player who is like super thrilled to be playing the fall. AP Kaisa, right? Just like, he's the kind of guy who's like, I want to kill him. I want to go <laughs> forward. I want to hit him. And AP Kaisa is just like, you know, you stay over there. I'm going to throw stuff at you and you cannot get within a screen of me. So as long as we can maintain this boundary, it's going to be okay. But it's not the same kind of like go get him style of gameplay as we often see coming up from versions of Kaisa previously. Instead, it is going to be something that is significantly less cowry to me. It's kind of a, the skunk and run. Just put up your defenses what? and then get out of there as fast as possible. If what? you startle me, I'm going to kill her instinct. What, what is it? Skunk and oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. This is this is bold. This is Wait, bold from Sturdy. What's going on right here? What is going on oh right my here? God. First blood is what's going on. Sturdy, PCL. Hey, he was trying to get the one v one, but that gun is not good enough against the future. Sturdy getting that kill top side. You can't see it right now, but I'm just sitting here, just like open mouth, so shocked seeing that come out from Sturdy, right? He chose the W start on Jace to take the level one and get all the extra auto attacks because he knows it's not great if he lets PCL just bully him around with the Q later on. He wants to win the fight immediately and he does that. He even gets the flash and teleport out. Just needs to make sure he doesn't die. Uh, this is one of the nice things about grabbing this Thresh is being able to counter the Zenith Blade with the Flay. Follows up the punish with the death sentence and Sky Tech already heard in this bot lane. Yeah, I mean, good stuff coming out from Zyko and Evan Arl in order to try and turn around some of this early play. But Tomio now comes mid lane. Tomio, about 300 health. The charm does not land. Sligo, a good attempt. Could have been a lot of damage there, but no cigar. Not going to get anything, but it is going to allow Sligo to clear out all of these minions on his own. And Tomio doesn't end up losing a lot of time for it. It is going to be going right on back to farming. But hey, remember we had the counter that I believe only got like two during the landing phase of times where Maryville Saints came down bottom lane to affect whether or not Kyra and Skytech were going to get a lead? 
this is kind of like, I recognize half coming out from Kind Jungle. Like, he kind of shows up and says, hey, I'm going to take away this vision so that it can come back later in the future. But it is still a situation where they need to find some of these early game wins in order to put Kyrie and Skydeck behind. They got the priority down here. Now, what do Marigold Saints do with it? That's going to be the question. They, uh, for Evil Geniuses Academy, getting that early lead would be much beloved. They're trying to set it up right now with the gank down into the bot lane. Tomio just waiting for the lane gank. Uh, again, it's Thresh. It's a hard champion to get a gank onto oh. for the most part, especially when you are running this uh, Leona. There's the flay that comes out that stops the Zenith Blade and the traps come out. And like that, the gank is thwarted. Good stuff coming out from Zayko. That's the second time he has just stopped the Zenith Blade right as it's trying to go through. But we're also seeing that up here in the top lane, right, this Jay's Graves matchup is not the easiest thing in the world. So the fact that Surti got the first blood and now has the Vamp Scepter deals with a lot of some of the early game issues. And again, props to him for finding that. There's not a lot of players who would have the confidence just duel to the death at level one in that way. But the rest of the map, relatively even, uh, is really the only place where a large lead has built itself and PCL I mean to his credit is doing a good job at losing the minimum. Surdy so far in this series has been quite the phenomenal player. Oh, oh don't want to cast a curse him right there as him oh. and PCL are gonna go at it. Kind jungle waiting in the wings will get the punish. Takes down Surdy in the top side for PCL. Great patience coming out from Kind, right? He was sitting there for quite a while, right behind where PCL was, waiting for Surti to be really aggressive, and they are able to find the punish. So, just as we were saying, Surti had done a fantastic job at the beginning of the game, finding that early lead. Now it's kind of been largely reversed. He loses a lot of experience, and Kind also looking to come into the mid lane. Coming from all directions, there's a control ward. Out comes the scatter, the, the weak, but the minion says no. Saligo lives. Oh, that's so tragic coming up from Maryville. They were doing such a good job uh. at setting up to punish in the mid lane. They had Kind there, they had Psycho, but unfortunately, the scatter of the weak. Minions are too weak, too. They get scattered, and now Psycho trying to find another way back in. I don't know if Saligo's going to give it, though. This is so cheeky. This is so cheeky. Scatter of the Week would get the stun, and there it no is! He way. gets it over the wall! Scatter of the Week comes out, finds the stun, one more auto, and Zyko will take him down. Tobio watching his mid laner fall. It's a good start, much better than what we had in game number one for Maryville Saints. Oh, for sure, good stuff coming through from Maryville, ready to fire back, showing why. I was saying, like, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they do find themselves a bit of an upset here, but Surdy also a lot of damage down on the top lane. I, I'm really impressed with the turnaround that Maryville have already gotten this time around, and now Evan just needs to not get turned around. Evan's alone, a flash forward shield, a daybreak into the Zenith blade. Tomio just gonna walk him down underneath the tower. Aggro is juggled. Going down is Evan Oral now attempting a tower dive over in the top side is Surdy. Says, never mind, uh, it's just gonna be a drive through. I'm gonna head back home. Peace. Peace. Nice doing business with you, but good stuff on the bottom side of the map, right? Skytech and Tomio waiting. One of the things I always look for when I evaluate players is how much patience they have, how much presence of mind they have in order to not just do things instantly. And watching Tomio play that a little bit slower is very impressive. That shot blast. Oh, going for the play is PCL. Mistimes it. Can't get the kill on the 30. So far, uh, Vampire Acceptors picked up both ways. Now a fight going on in the River Kind jungle, caught out by the charm of Saligo. Kauri tries to find more into Psycho, but Control going over to EGA, the Dragonside River. Yeah, I mean, impressive stuff coming through from Evil Geniuses to, again, turn it right around. When they were the ones struggling a little bit, they're the ones now able to find this first dragon. They have a small gold lead in. It feels like, for the most part, when it's like one-on-one, two-v-two, Except for this, which is that is like the third or fourth item that's happened that we've seen on camera. Other than that, it feels like evil geniuses are just individually outplaying their opponents and they're only really losing when there's somebody there that they're not expecting. Uh, I'm liking the mind games though in the bottom lane. Uh, it, it, it might be the third time we've seen it on camera, but Skytech is mixing it up. First, it was just the Zenith Blade. This time, it was the Hex Blast into Zenith Blade, trying to burn the Flay. A little bit earlier this time uh didn't work out but hey the changeup is there yeah i i almost wonder if sky tech needs to like position such that he doesn't actually throw it out but looks like he would and then try and get the flay out early i mean it's part of why thresh has been so good in this matchup for so long it's just that one interaction 
It's reactable on the ping that these players are going for. And now, Maryville, they have the bottom lane of Kairi Skytech underneath the turret. And we're going to get some damage down from Evan RL. The first time that they've gotten like a seriously 10 CS up against one of our best bottom lanes. This is what you want for Maryville Stains. Get this Jinx online, get this Jinx going. Looking over at the top side, trying to get PCL online is going to be behind jungle as potentially walk around here for a tower dive the minion wave is really pushed in kind jungle seeing him fall to about half health that smoke screen can do you dirty you won't see the gank coming if you're caught in it true good stuff coming up from Surdy. actually i mean oh they get the oh, first one finally gets the zenith blade but the lantern to protect evan rl you will get out but close call right there get the uh, getting the heart real beating right there for evan rl a little bit of a scare there is the scout of the week. On to Saligo. Kind jungle. Just waits out, but it's only for harassment. This game feels so different than game one, right? Tomio, I get kind. No, this doesn't look too different here as Tomio tries to invade onto Kind Jungle's jungle. Out comes the charm. It will land on to get back, but just chasing Maryville Saints out of their own property. Yeah, it's, it's such a different game plan coming in from Evil Geniuses, right? When they don't have the Hecarim, when they don't have uh, the Vex that can just sit there and create a huge amount of space and have this massive trigger pull. Now, Evil Genius is like, their engage is weaker, right? It's not as easy for them to get these fights started, so they're looking more desperately for things. Zap lands, the slow is there on the Kauri. He flashes away out of range for Zyko. Now the friends are here. The play successful nice play. onto the Zenith Blade. Now a death sense. It's on to Tomio. Tomio gets low. Kind jungle low as well. Gets caught by the shield. The Daybreak Sonic wave onto his back. Tomio scores up a kill. And now it is a good position coming out for Evil Genius's Academy as a close call results in a kill in their favor. And I want to give a bit more praise to Tomio again for waiting for the right time to actually use his abilities. Now, the fact that he is just waiting for all of these uh, opportunities and waiting for the flay to come out before he threw out the Q just means that he actually gets to do all the damage instead of getting flayed out of both the Zenith Blade and the uh, original oh, Strike. Oh my god, Surdy! You can't do that to people! Disrespectful, my dude! Goodness, he just goes right into PCL's face. We gotta take another look at what happened because we can't break down that much more. Yeah, I mean, watch Tomio. He goes in with the Q, and then he lets Skytech go first before he follows it up himself. And that just means that he actually gets to play this entire thing. He's not getting caught up in the crowd control. He gets to do the damage necessary. And then it just means that he's still alive. He's still in a good spot. Now as he comes down bottom lane, we'll see another fight. And they are not done with nice. the bot lane. A beautiful Dragon's Rage it results in the death of Zyko. They are getting Kauri online. He gets his first assist of the game. CSing pretty well. Now we'll get to cash in on some plates. I love that we get to see both sides of Tomio, right? We were just spending so much of this game praising his mechanical ability to hold on and wait a couple of seconds in order to get the maximum usage out of his abilities. But immediately after that, he comes and shows, I could do this fast too. You want to see it fast? You want to see it? You want to see it again? Right? He just comes in and is able to do everything necessary on the Lisa. And it shows he's thinking about the game. He understands when he can wait. He understands when he can't afford to and needs to go instantly. And that's one of the things that I love seeing in some of our young players. And something that I want to continue seeing from Tomio throughout the rest of this tournament. It's already so brutal over on this top side. You see how so he's bullied. And it's such a contrast on uh, the way Cerny really is. Uh, have you seen any interviews with him? He's so wholesome, so optimistic. If the things he's doing to PCL up here just mean. Just mean. Just mean. It's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for PCL to try and come back when you feel it feels like the opposing top laner is in your head, right? Surdy not only getting the two kills at this point as solo kills, but also going to be getting two, maybe three plates at this point. Has the Eclipse completed already, where PCL still looking to try and complete his first item. And Evil Geniuses just have such a strong power point to play around as, ooh, it does mean that suddenly, when we said that this game was going to be very mid-bottom focused, it's just Surdy bullying PCL. Ooh, a nice death sentence coming out of Zyko, but isolated is get back, has to back off Kind Jungle. We'll lead the fray for Maryville Saints, Evil Geniuses Academy. Starting to wrap around the dragon as Ligo pops the spirit rush. One charge going through, jumping in is going to be Tomio. He gets the execute onto Kind Jungle, gets pulled back in, will drop. As continuing the fight, Kauri in perfect health will chase down all the remaining members of Maryville Saints and claim that dragon for their own.
super, super clean play coming out from Kauri as well. It just feels like everybody on Evil Geniuses is having these big moments, right? It looked kind of bad to start things off, right? There are too many members of Maryville here in order for Evil Geniuses to feel comfortable. But the way that they play first, EG, Tomio, recognizes that Kind Jungle is low enough. He just kills him, and it means that there's no way for Maryville to actually pick things up. But then Kauri, on the other side, this champion isn't super strong at this point in the game. He doesn't have a whole lot of AD. He doesn't have the Muramana online. But his ability to go in and take basically no damage while picking up individual members is something that we always expect Kauri to have a lot of success with. Kauri looked fantastic in those moments as Tomio tries to find get back into the mid lane. Uh, the lead getting stronger and stronger for Evil Geniuses Academy as we get to the 14 minute mark. Turret plates now falling 4K in favor of Evil Geniuses Academy. 4,000. And one of the things that I want to see coming up from PCL is this matchup is good for Jace, again, with really good play. If you mm -hmm. are able to constantly push her around PCL, the fact that you don't have ammo as the Jace means that PCL has these very specific trade windows that he can go for. But. If it starts to ever be Graves favored, it becomes very Graves favored. Surdy is constantly in this race, right, to make sure that he never falls behind. And so far, he's continuously winning it. But now that the Holebreaker is completed, even with it nerfed, there's a lot more armor that PCL gets to play with. And it makes it very difficult. Jace doesn't yet have enough armor penetration to just get through all of the defenses that PCL built up. We just call him Dirty Surdy after this uh, Dirty Surdy. Rounds match. She grew a mustache. <laughs> a curly one? Curly one, yes. Just his evil twin brother up there in the top side. <laughs> oh, wait, dirty 30. Dirty 30. Well, we'll see. Here's a play coming through. Kauri needs to try and get out. Kauri caught out. We'll use the killer instinct. But the death sentence catches Kauri with three men on Kauri. It's going to be an easy shutdown picked up for Evan Allen. So close, so close for the TCL MVP to almost get out, but Zyko one step ahead of him, but it is still traded back on the far side. Didn't get to quite see it, but it's going to be a Rift Herald crash onto two turrets and so much money. Going over to Evil Genius's top and jungle. We see Evan Earl picking up a decent chunk of money for himself. It's just getting traded back for two money bags. We're going after get back. Charm doesn't land. Scatter of the week onto Tomio. He jumps right back onto his face, says no you. Now the mid lane tower more fit as this map gets opened up. Evil Geniuses Academy in the driver's seat. And we're starting to see inklings of our first game once again, right? Where it's just a total stomp coming through for Evil Geniuses Academy. Tomio heals himself right back up and suddenly Kind Jungle like, mm, don't know if I want this anymore. He's going to have to be backing away. And it's not... The super clean early game that we were seeing from Evil Geniuses in game one, right? They've given over more kills. They've gotten caught out a little bit more by the Saints. And credit to the Saints for taking these unexpected routes, taking these opportunities to go for ganks that Evil Geniuses weren't expecting. But now they got to do crazy stuff like this in order to try and find one person. And a single ward should stop the play in its tracks. So much of an effort coming out of Maryville Saints to try and get Evan RL to be online as they try to hunt down Surdy, that flash. Well timed, he will be absolutely fine. In the bottom lane, Kauri will get a lot of alone time with this tower, with this farm. Keep cashing in, keep becoming a threat. But that's the trade, right? And it's a, it's a pretty crap trade deal, man. These guys should probably play a little bit more Katan uh, because this is what they gotta do in order to even just get on the map. Yes, they get more off of the objective bounty, but when you're sharing that much gold, sharing that much XP off of the wave, you don't get a lot out of it. And the rest of Evil Geniuses now recognize that there's nobody here. They can take total control of this bottom side of the map and continue to starve out kind. Kauri getting solo turret gold for that first one in the bot lane will grab another brick. Another 600 gold going into the Marksman. Evil Geniuses Academy was seriously off to the races at this point. Got to see this next recall. Should be coming in soon. I mean, you have Baron in 40 seconds, so... Reset is pretty, not Baron, excuse me, a Dragon in 40 seconds, so a Reset is pretty welcomed right now. Yeah, and uh, again, as a Katan player, everybody should know that you want two bricks, not just one brick. That we saw going down up in the top lane, right? Yes, Two's yes, better than yes, one? Yes, thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. You are the math matrix. I don't <laughs> want to do math in front of you. <laughs> on the One broadcast. greater than two. Uh, I, I think I could do that much. One greater than two? You think you could do that? <laughs> Sometimes it, you know, it depends. Kind jungle. Oh. Woo! 
Uh, kind jungle over the wall goes right after Zerdy, but oh. Zerdy will put up a fight before going down. It's still shut down going over to PCL. It's still gold that very much needs, but Evil Geniuses Academy are applying pressure elsewhere on the map. Yeah, if Evan Earl had missed that rocket, that would have absolutely been a dead Viego on the far side. So good stuff to Maryville Saints to get everything going all at once. And now, oh no, Eric, it is beginning. Welcome. And it is ending. To a fed Kaisa. He wasn't even that fed. He had two kills. Yeah, but the towers. There was so <laughs> much alone time with those towers. So many solo bricks picked up by Kauri. It's a lot. It's a lot of money, man. <laughs> I mean, he's on two items, and I have bad news for any Marvel fans. That gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't get better, Eric. You start getting into a position where now you're going to be starting to two-shot Evan RL every single time. And, you know, oftentimes there's, like, good advice that you can give to people. It's like, oh, yeah, don't stand in vision. Make sure that you do... Uh, make sure that you are looking out for any opportunities. But realistically, like, this is where we start throwing out the Korean advice. It's like, how do you deal with that? It's just, don't get hit. Put people in front of you. But, <laughs> but who? <laughs> who do you put in front of you? Anyone that's not Evan RL. Any, even Get Back. I mean, put, put Surdy in the way. Just have Get Back press R, and then it's okay. Put him in the way. He's done his job. Yeah, okay. Well, Surdy, he's gotten surprised a couple of times. Okay, is he going to get surprised Ouch. now? Tell me right now, Josh. Tell me right now. Is he going to get surprised? Oh, he's looking pretty surprised. Yeah, I'm, he's, I'm, he's looking pretty shocked. He, he's shocked, and he's down. He's Ed. pretty shocked, blasted, if I do say so myself. Uh, Maryville Saints grabbing Surdy. Side lane relief, but look at Evil Geniuses right away towards the mid lane. Going to grab another brick. Another brick. And unfortunately, you know, one person is not worth one break in a, this large game of Catan that we're playing. We do have three dragons already picked up for Evil Geniuses. And it's not the 10, 14,000 gold lead that we were seeing for Evil Geniuses the game before, but you can't be upset with 7,000. Ooh, Tomio, Dragon's Rage, PCL into the wall. Saligo so has to back off. Not much mana really left here as Kauri lands one of the missiles. Not willing to hop onto Zyko. Long range missile almost onto PCL. You can tell right now, Evil Geniuses Academy They're itching to close this out. Can't break the base just yet. But now that the Baron's on the table, Eric, it's uh, we're gonna have to see what Maryville can try and do, right? You can pick off Surdy as many times as you want, and you can if you do that like ten more times, then yeah, you might be in an okay position. But the Baron's getting started at twenty-one minutes. Evil Geniuses are doing it with two people. That's how confident they are. All right, Saligo so coming in on the flank. Tomio is a little bit low here. This is somewhat concerning. Surdy is not in the area to try and assist just yet. Five more seconds will change that as Surdy is able to reconvene with his squad. So no fight going to break out over this Baron. It'll be very juicy for Maraville, especially if they can grab one of those objective bounties to try and potentially set up a return. Jinx does enable some late game fights to go uh, Maraville's way, but it's a far cry. It's still a, uh, it's still a position that they need some sort of setup to get to. I, I think the setup that they need to do is basically just bring Surdy, right? Mm -hmm. He is so far ahead. He has so much money. In fact, everybody on Evil Geniuses have money. So if you just, like, force a 5v5 situation, it becomes very, very difficult for the members of Maryville to stand up to all the poke, right? It's like being on Facebook in 2008. Oh, come on. Right. There's just too many pokes. Come on, Josh. You're showing our age, Josh. Please. I, I'm just saying, it is not my fault that Zoomers were right after me. Oh, wait. <laughs> hey, hold on. A very interesting flank here for a second. I, I, I thought Saligo was going to go over towards the top side. Uh, just completely running through your topic right now, Josh. <laughs> As Shelly slams okay. into the tower, into the mid lane. Uh, Saligo still waiting in the flank. Potentially looking for an oh. engage here. Double scatter of the week onto Skytech and Tomio. Not following through. Inhibitor falls. EGA backing out. Gonna be continuing to eat Kind's jungle. And unfortunately, it means that Kind has not had anything to eat for quite a while. He's still trying to find some way back in, but he's got the Divine Sunder and he loses his Raptors, he loses his Frog Legs. Right, where where does he find anything to eat? Because like all of his laners, they still have farms that they can go back to. They can go back to the lane. They have something that they can pick up. And in fact, uh, 
evil geniuses, I'm not sure how quickly they're going to be returning to this mid lane in order to try and end things. And so the pressure it gives is not super valuable at this point in the game. And it does mean that they are going to be losing one lane of farm because it feels like evil geniuses are going to be trying to pull people out of the base, right? They're going to be going for this Hextech soul. They're going to be trying to get Maryville to come through. But the mid lane inhibitor... You know, you're going to be there anyway. They're going to have three or four champions. They're going to be clearing these waves, and it's just a, a little bit of extra gold that they're going to be giving over as Evil Geniuses. They take total control, and we'll see what Maryville try and do. They went for a lot of bush ganks last game. It's up to the Saints. We did talk about their pick. The potential is there thanks to Zyko and Get Back. The name of the hey, game look. is going to be Protect Evan RL, though. Now Saligo jumps in, goes after Psycho, gets the charm onto the back line, get back is deleted, and so are the Saints. Two down so far. Here comes the retreat. Zerdy able to teleport oh. in as PCL gets charmed and slowly chipped away on now. Four falling for the Saints. Only the support is alive. This is done and dusted. Evil Geniuses Academy gonna take this first series. Evan RL died to two Kaisa W's and one Accelerated Shock Blast. He did not get to play that fight at all. And Evil Geniuses are going to be using the power of their poke in order to find this series a very clean 2-0, a very obvious statement to anybody who is watching coming in from all the Proving Grounds qualifiers that Academy is here to play. Big performance out of Evil Geniuses Academy. Uh, you're going to tamper a little bit with that KDA. Will be the same the nexus is exposed here wait oh. a second are we not done are we not done josh ega they're going for something a little bit cheeky by trying to get the uh, kda pattern going through and it's going to result in this game being extended by another couple of minutes well evil geniuses are still here to play that that hasn't changed they're just here <laughs> to play a little bit longer going to be trying to take this down on kauri is going to be able to pick up that red buff and thinking with portals tomio unfortunately can't yet he's still in combat <laughs> he's okay all right now time for the drake game's not over just yet kind jungle tries to flash over dragon soul secured for evil geniuses academy and now it's the recall baron's on the table anything could really go for evil geniuses academy the risk launch thing. yeah uh, i just again i kind of want to point out that evan rl's uh half in this game right that's one w coming up from kaisa um doesn't take any damage from that but there's a second w from kaisa and then sturdy kills him we are at the point of the game where all these squishy members of maryville do not get to do a whole lot up against Kauri and Surdy. And so now the Evil Geniuses are leveraging this poke. We will see what Maryville try and do to come in. And this is this is desperation. This is your proving ground. Powered by Horizon, my new best friend, are going to try and find a way into this game. It's Ooh. their last chance. On to Surdy. The Saints able to grab one. We'll see what happens when the Saints go marching in. Okay. On to Baron as Evil Geniuses <laughs> Academy are taking the detour towards the base of Maryville University. The recall being made by the Maryville Saints. But Tomio, he smells blood in the water. Oh, they Sonic find Wave two. doesn't land, going after Evan. This is who you need to protect, and Kauri is right on top of him. Two down for the Saints. Evil Geniuses Academy winning straight out. The desynced backs plus the Winions going into the mid lane means Maryville all over the place. And now Saligo, ooh, looking for that charm, but Oh, Sky Tech, yeah, doesn't get over the wall there. So we will see a little bit more time. What the? Oh, what he just ah! jumps in! Oh, Kauri! to the win from Kauri! But that was a big mistake to come out from Evil Geniuses Academy. They were looking to just close in style. Punish by the Maryville University Saints. All right, uh, I'm gonna be honest. That was that was a bit of an in, <laughs> a little bit of an in there Not a coming in from Cavalry. We will be going on for a little while longer, and now we actually have an opportunity for Maryville to try and start the Baron, take this objective Kitty. off the map. Why is this game still going on, Josh? Evil, I think evil geniuses are living a little bit too evilly. Uh, turns out I didn't know that was possible before, but Maryville they they now have control. Cavalry is up in 10 seconds. If they're able to find like a pick or two here, they can do the Baron and they can they're wait till Elder. They're trying to. They're going right after Tomio. Tomio puts out the Dragon's Rage. He's low, hops away. The damage comes back oh, though. Evan RL starting to get lower. Surdy returns the favor, takes out Kind Jungle. Tomio will live. 
And just like that, Maryville Saints, they got a lead. It is stripped away from them. And Evil Geniuses Academy are looking to close out right here, right now. Skytech can't get any closer. Kauri throws out the missile. Oh. Will he jump in with the killer instinct when he sees Tomio go? The answer is yes. He goes golden, grabs, get back. And now they're putting in the final nails in the coffin. Evil Geniuses Academy, they're finally going to take this series 2-0. I thought Skytech building a QSS was the epitome of you are too rich for your own good. This time it is Tomio building a Frozen Heart. Oh, here comes the death sentence. Please don't make me bite my tongue this time. Nope, Maryville Saints are falling. Evan RL's down. Pie Kick Lord scouring underneath his tower, but the Nexus is now exposed. Pat that KDA, but don't pat it too much. The Nexus taken down 2 0. Oh, Evil Geniuses Academy. Evil Geniuses looking so good in this series, man. They are so strong across the board. They're able to find everything that they need. And there were a couple missteps, but I feel like all those missteps at the end were just like, yeah, screw it. We are, we've already won. All we need to do is take it a little bit seriously in order to actually close out the game. And that's exactly what they do. They're saying, okay, okay, let's not, let's not troll around too hard. Let's actually go for a win. And once that happens, once Evil Geniuses decide that the game is over, the series is theirs. Dominant win coming out of Evil Geniuses Academy. Even with some of those mistakes, it was still domination at the end of the day. So hats off to them. They now have earned that extra life as they get out of the play-ins. We are going to take a moment to throw it over to short break because we want to break this down a little bit more. But we need Mazel here. We need our host to be able to do that. So be sure to stay tuned because we'll be right back.
Tomio, Tomio, it is so good to see you. It is so good to hear from you. Thank you for joining me as the jungle from Evil Geniuses Academy. First of all, no problem, no problem. Interview powered by Verizon here for the Proving Grounds. I gotta ask you, going up today in this last game, you you purchased a singular item that probably has a lot of people talking. The frozen heart purchase. Is it just a mental damage item? Were you just like, all right, yeah. I, I need to find another way to get on top of these guys? No, frozen heart is an OP. It's just OP. That's why. <laughs> it's like, okay. okay. It's just OP. There's no reasoning. It's just OP. I like it. Okay, just OP. You just know what works. Well, I, I want to talk about this series a little bit. It was a quick one for you guys. Seems uh, yeah. like things have turned around very much so since the end of Academy uh, regular season for you guys. What was the difference this week? What really changed in the preparation coming into Proving Grounds? Uh, well, I guess we didn't have the best spring split. We finished at like a low number, standing. So you just wanted to come in Proving Grounds fresh with you. Mindset, fresh start. And Looking to I do like our I best. Like Hello? C can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, absolutely. Oh. I said I love oh. it. I love it. So oh, 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 did oh, did bad. the Disney did the Disney trip? Did you go with Surdy to Disney? Was it a whole team trip? Is that the difference maker? No, I didn't go to Disney. I, I had you obligations. Yeah, okay, so it's just a Surdy obligation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the obligations take priority well i want to ask you a little yeah. bit about competition right i mean this is the first proving grounds match for you guys it wasn't an elimination best of three you're going against kind jungle who himself has a decent amount of experience and the main pushing power on uh, maryville saints do you have any thoughts on kind jungle in general as a jungler and maybe about the competition in pg yeah i think the i think he's a, he's a good jungler the competition PG is pretty high throughout all the other all the other teams. Yeah, all those right. are my thoughts. Well, hey, speaking of speaking of the competition, looking ahead a little bit, your next matchup is against somebody you know very well, and it will be against Rose Thorn and CLG Academy. Do you have any thoughts moving forward in Proving Grounds, especially after such a dominant performance here? Uh... We'll try to prepare well in our regular season. We went like one and three, but we'll come back stronger and hope to not fall down. And I think if we win, the bracket. I I don't know how the bracket works actually. I I forgot, but I'm looking for it. I'm looking <laughs> it's for double it. It's this, 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 yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we were chilling in spring split, but not, not spring guns. The real tournament, so. We'll, yeah, we'll see yeah that's happens. what I like to hear. Or, I like yeah. to hear but he, Tobio. Their, their team is pretty I, good. Their solid team, in general. <laughs> they are. For First in Academy for a reason, for yeah. sure. I, one last little bit here. I want to give you the floor. Do you have any shout-outs, anybody you want to talk about before we let you go? Uh, any shout-outs? I'm thinking of in my head, but right now, I, I don't have any shout-outs in my head right now. Maybe... All right. Uh, I can't think right now. Sorry, sorry. No problem, man. dude. No problem. No pressure. No pressure. Tobio, thank you so no much for I'm chatting with me. Her. Congratulations on the uh, the two quick victory here, but make sure you keep that grind thank set you. up because you got a lot more games to go. Tobio, take yeah, it easy. Yeah. Thank you. Take it easy too. All right, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and send it off to a little break here while we do get ready for our second series of the day. So don't touch that browser.